Well, welcome everyone to Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. I'm your host, Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. On today's show, developing your own financial profile, part one in our series on retiring right with media personality and financial consultant, Alex Joyce. Welcome to the show, Alex. Thanks, Steve. Alex, you are a major player in the Midwest. You are a great planner and... I noticed that you do some things that most planners don't do, and that is, you know, when we're, we want we want to build a financial profile for our clients. Sure, everybody should have one, but we don't. So, you, one of the things you like to talk about is a risk tolerance test. I know it's not science, but it's a really good indication of possible future behavior. Talk to me about why this is important. Sure, I, you know, Steve, I think that when people get in and they start really looking for a financial advisor, what they really start to look at is is the emotional aspect. I mean, everybody wants their money to grow, mm -hmm. right? It, but the thing is, they really don't consider if it doesn't or if it doesn't necessarily keep up with inflation or if it starts to go backwards, as we saw mm -hmm. last year. Um, it's difficult. So I think that if, if someone really starts to be honest with themselves and consider their money going backwards or negative, wh how much are they, are they really, really willing to lose? Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the, the, the key points that we bring out in our, in our practice is looking at the color of money, really going through a true risk analysis, mm -hmm. asking of the appropriate questions um, from, a, from a, an approach, if you, if you invested 500,000, how would you feel if that money went to 250 or mm -hmm. if it went to up to 600,000, mm -hmm. just to kind of give us a, an indication of growth mm -hmm. risk risk versus reward, Steve. I've noticed that the consumer is uptight right now. If you're a boomer and you're sitting there from born 46 to 64, you're feeling the pain of 2018 as if we forgot what 2008 was about. Right. So, so when I'm talking about risk and I'm getting close to retirement, sure. just the timeline shortens my you know, ability to stay in the market. Yeah, it makes yeah. me feel uptight. I agree. I agree. You know, we look at and we try to have the conversation of the reward in terms of looking at the risk free rate, right? Looking at a 90 day mm -hmm. T bill of being, let's say, looking at inflation. And, and if, if we look at the risk they're willing to take as opposed to um, what treasuries are paying, mm -hmm. what's the reward for, for being a little bit more aggressive, mm -hmm. right? So I think that um, it, it's difficult really to just kind of pinpoint where mm -hmm. somebody is the herd mentality, mm -hmm. if you will. Everybody, like I said, wants to grow their money. Sure. But I think that the first thing they have to do is be honest with themselves and, and just kind of sit down. We have to have an open conversation. And, and and if they want to become more risky or if they want to grow their money at, at, a, at the speed of mm -hmm. lightning, we have to just kind of really slow them down as an advisor. I have noticed a propensity between men and women that if I have a, a woman take my risk tolerance test against her husband's, I'll notice that her risk tolerance is reflective of her 401k. <laughs> sure. His is not so much. He's yeah, much right. more aggressive on the test I than agree. he is or in the uh, holdings than he is on the test. I agree. Now, how do we have such a disconnect sometimes, especially with men? Yeah. We have a disconnect. We 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 sound we're pontificating, we're bloviating you know, at the office <laughs> on how much we're making. Yeah, but right. our test tells me that I'm conservative. It, it, it's a difficult question to be honest with you, because I see that every day as well, right? Where the woman I think is more um, more, more conservative, mm -hmm. right? I think a lot of times just out of nature, maybe they're more, uh, geared in terms of knowing the expenses, mm -hmm. um, maybe knowing what the future holds in terms of what they can't afford, or maybe they're doing the budget, mm -hmm. maybe they're doing the balancing. And so they're, they're, they're less likely to want to take risks because they're maybe they're comfortable where mm -hmm. they are. And they're maybe a little bit more frugal where the man, mm -hmm. um, and I can only speak for myself, right. But the man mm -hmm. just happens to be a little bit more aggressive and they want to just take charge and they want to, mm -hmm. they, 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 like I said, the her mentality, they're, they're, uh, their point of interest is in growth, 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 mm -hmm. right? And and I, and I see it, like you said, where the woman just kind of slows down, is more realistic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about the uh, the opportunity ahead, and, and maybe they're just more frugal and more conservative, if you will, by nature. I want to ask you a question about your generation. Do you think millennials at large, watching what their baby boomer parents have went through, are they starting to become a little conservative? It's, it's, that's a difficult question. I think that myself... Right. Being a millennial, if you will, I'm looking at, for instance, what my father kind of went through. Right. He was a Chrysler, a GMer. Mm -hmm. And at the time where he was just at the prime of his career and seeing things kind of go backwards in that in that manufacturing mm -hmm. Chrysler atmosphere, mm -hmm. if you will, where his 401k was was kind of taken by storm. And so me looking at that from the age I was then. It does have a little bit more conservative mm -hmm. uh, behavior in my mm -hmm. mentality towards investing. My peers uh, mm -hmm. would probably agree where they've seen some of their, you know, some of the, some of their parents kind of go mm -hmm. through that financial catastrophe, if you would. 
And so, but I think that there's the other end where, where I mean, we're in the tech era. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we look at some of the technology out there and it's mm-hmm. hard to just be more conservative because mm-hmm. you kind of want to jump on that mm-hmm. because it works in the speed of lightning. Well, you got some time here. I mean, you're talking about Lenny. It's it's a time 25, 30 years out. It's true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when I'm looking at uh, risk tolerance, I do the test. And if you write me at Steve at LifeSizeSolutions.com, we'll send you the sure. test. Alex will grade it for you. His shop will tell you what it is. When I'm looking at the test results, it shows conservative, then it goes kind of conservative, moderate, sure. then moderate, then moderate, aggressive, and then aggressive. Then aggressive so sure. it'll, it'll kind of block you out into categories. Yeah. And that helps you kind of read the heart and the mindset of the client. It does. It does. We, we, we like to look at money. I mentioned the colors, right? Mm-hmm. Green money being that more conservative, no mm-hmm. money, if you will. Then we kind of get into yellow, which is the money that you tend to be a little bit more aggressive with. And there's mm-hmm. red. Red is the money that, hey, you know what? If I lose it, I don't lose sleep overnight, mm-hmm. although a lot of us would. But we just kind of categorize that mm-hmm. in simple ways to people can kind of understand mentally mm-hmm. what risk truly looks like. In, the, in, in terms of colors, if you well, will. Well, uh, talking about conservative, I just noticed that the fixed rate annuity crossed over the 4% mark. Now, that's yeah. a big bellwether yeah. for, for conservative people. They go, hey, you know, 4%. I don't know if I'm knocking that out with dividends off my stocks sure. or my interest rate. <clears> in my, <throat> I don't know if I'm pulling 4%. Sure. So five-year lock, that could be a way to go because it's conservative. Yeah. Now, when we talk about risk, now here's, the, here's why I say this. Okay. Uh, I, I did this test one time, and the guy says, well, wait a minute, let me get this straight. I just My test tells me that I want a 15% return, but to do that, I might need to expose my portfolio to a 20% loss. Yeah, yeah, why yeah. does that not sound right? <laughs> you know, I just, you know. Yeah, it, it, uh, it doesn't, right? right. But, but that's the type of risk that you have to be aware of that you're taking, mm-hmm. if not more, for it to kind of come back, right? It's the volatility, right? It's the mm-hmm. swing of, of how the market's going to come up and how it's mm-hmm. going to go down. Um, like you said, I mean, we, we haven't seen a year like we did last year, 2018 in a while. People kind of mm-hmm. panicked. Um, I heard it best. It was an article I read, and, and the gentleman said, stock's the only thing that people don't buy when they're on sale. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's very difficult, that frame of mind. But mm-hmm. again, if people are chasing mm-hmm. those high returns, they have to be willing to take that type mm-hmm. of risk, Steve. If the I'm looking at beta risk, I went on Morningstar and I started loading. I took my client's portfolio and I loaded it up, put it right in there. It sure. gave me a number, a beta. Here's your risk. Here's yeah. your beta risk. Yeah. And so it was 1.74, which is high, which yeah, is high. Yeah, yeah. So I looked at him. He's 57 years old. I said, here is what you have. This is like going to a, a gentleman who's who's been having problems at night, urination, and he has to get a PSA test, right? <laughs> and I say, your PSA is kind of high. Yeah, right. You know, and he goes, well, I feel great. I know, yeah. but but it's high. Yeah, we right. need to get it checked out. Sure. I just saw your portfolio. Are you really that kind of a risk taker? Yeah. So when you put math to this, I put a beta risk number in front of him. Yeah. All of a sudden, he was like, well, wait a minute. Maybe I'm not as, con- you know, as, as I thought I was conservative. I guess yeah. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's true. We I, you speak Morningstar, mm-hmm. right? Because it's an indicator mm-hmm. of, of how the portfolio is performing against the benchmark, mm-hmm. right? Everybody wants alpha. Everybody wants mm-hmm. to be ahead of the benchmark, mm-hmm. if you will. But you have to look at the beta and how much beta risk you're truly taking, which, mm-hmm. is, which is equivalent to the movement of the market. Um, so when we, we, and we do, we use, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Morningstar in our practice and we show people compared to the benchmark mm-hmm. or compared to where they're trying to go, the risk involved in, in, in that road mm-hmm. and it's, and it's a great tool. So I, I 100% agree with you. Point, 1.7 is relatively high if you've got Seems somebody that's th- relatively conservative. Now, uh, the last thing I want to talk about in this segment is the estimating your timeline. Now, in your case, millennials are 25, 30 years out. Okay. Sure. Some generation X and Y shorter. Boomers, you are on the precipice, right? I mean, you're right on the outside. So, sure. so when I'm looking the shorter the timeline, I've noticed that the most good planners, including your own practice, they start to get conserved. They force down, they force a line of thinking down their client's mindset. Yeah, yeah. Say, hey, listen, your time isn't enough to make this cycle again. Sure. So talk a little bit about time. Time it, is time is it, it is, right? When we have baby boomer clients, and our clients are. Right. Mm-hmm. So I would probably say, Steve, that our average client is 64, 65 years old mm-hmm. um, in, in off subject, if you will. But I looked at that when I first originally started my practice as a challenge. But now it's it's truly not because I think that our older clients mm-hmm. embrace that mm-hmm. um, us being there for their generations and generations mm-hmm. to come. But um, we we still in our practice try to get our clients to understand the rule of 100. 
Mm -hmm. right? Right. Take your age, subtract mm -hmm. it from the rule of 100. That's the percentage of, of, mm -hmm. of that you should have in equities, if you will. 120 now, I believe, is what the appropriate number, just like the rule mm -hmm. of four percent now, probably closer to five. But we try to get our clients to understand, truly, if they've won, mm -hmm. there's no sense if they've won and they're crossing the finish line, there's no there's no sense to take more risk. Right. You've already won. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, we try to get them to preserve the majority of their capital, mm -hmm. but still try to keep up with inflation, Steve. I think that's sure. extremely important. If they do want to become a little bit more, more uh, in terms of risk, right, try to chase a little bit, um, we, we just kind of maybe carve out a, p a portion of mm -hmm. the portfolio, maybe designed for that, mm -hmm. designed for him, where she's saying, well, we just kind of want to preserve and make sure mm -hmm. that our ends are met, make sure that the bills mm -hmm. are, are, are taken care of. We can take the grandkids to Disney and things sure. of that nature, right? Your American dream. But we just want to make sure that we would design mm -hmm. that portfolio in a way where it's it's not cookie cutter, but it's, it's, it's truly there for the client. They mm -hmm. understand it. We can review it. We can analyze it. Mm -hmm. We can come back to it. We, sure. we can reflect. So that's what's most important to us. Well, don't forget to watch our next segment on determining financial product costs, part two in our series on retiring right. And keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, and of course, your financial advisor. You've been watching Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. Oh my God.